came from uh, Las Vegas to share some uh, part of our culture with you. Um, we're going to be demonstrating how to make Turkish coffee tonight. You are probably wondering what Turkish coffee has to do with friendship dinner. And uh, hopefully by the end of that, our presentation, you'll be able to put the two together. As a matter of fact, uh, friendship and coffee offering and accepting the coffee goes hand in hand. In Turkey, when we would like to uh, praise someone, we would praise that person as his coffee could be drank. Or when we went to honor someone, we say to them, I will have your cup of coffee. It's an honor for the one who offers it, and it's a privilege for the one to accept it. But there's an unspoken fact in there somewhere, which is very common in Turkey for us to use a lot of uh, unspoken ways to communicate certain messages. And offering Turkish coffee is one of those. When we offer coffee to our guests, in fact, we are offering them our friendship. It's a very important aspect of our hospitality. We've been married uh, several years and uh, uh, you know, we're really enjoying this tonight because uh, when we have dinner every night, it's like a friendship dinner. It's, uh, it's a time for us to share our cultures. Uh, you know, Mormons uh, here with us this evening and we know that drinking coffee is, is not something that, that resonates with them. We hope they'll forgive us our transgression in that regard. And uh, if you do pay attention closely, you may find out in the end we don't actually think coffee is all that important after all. Now, I, I'm doubly honored that the Pacifica Foundation uh, uh, asked me to be part of this tonight because uh, I'm not from Turkey. Uh, I'm only uh, Turkish by association. Uh, I, I guess they figured that uh, I had drunk enough Turkish coffee, or you could say I drank the Kool-Aid so I could participate in this. Coffee became a very important part of daily living uh, and part of the customs. Uh, it became so important that it actually became part of our language. And um, the, what we call breakfast is kahve altı, which became kahvaltı. So breakfast actually became in Turkish culture something that we eat just so we can have the coffee afterwards. Because in essence, Turkish coffee is not something you have with the meal. You have your coffee after a wonderful meal. And uh, Turkish meals are normally very, um, lots of courses. And it's, it takes place, and those of you who went to Turkey probably found out. So it takes a long time to have your dinner. And after dinner, enjoying some friendship and your company, then you will have your Turkish coffee. Turkish coffee is an adult drink. Kids do not drink Turkish coffee. My mother used to tell me I would grow a mustache if I had coffee. <laughs> you had to be a certain age to enjoy the pleasures of coffee. But you know, to make things more challenging, you're supposed to ask your guests how they would like their coffee, and there's four levels, okay? It depending on the level of the sugar you put in the coffee. So you can make it sweet, a lot of sugar. You can make it um, little sweet, uh, medium. And another challenging thing is that it's cooked very, very slowly over very, very low fire. Um, in fact, we have a saying in Turkey that we say, um, bir fincan kahvenin 40 yıl hatırı vardır. 
meaning that a cup of coffee is remembered for 40 years. What that really telling you is You're going to see her pour the coffee a little bit later when it reaches just the right point, and all that powder, the coffee is going to come with it. And uh, that makes for a little different drinking experience because, uh, contrary to what we do in the US, and I snuck this up here on the stage, right? <laughs> Starbucks, right? In the US, you grab a gallon of coffee. Okay. You pop a lid on the top of it so you won't spill it while you're shaking it around, driving down the road with, uh, you know, one hand on your cell phone and one hand on your coffee, right? right? And you're bouncing the coffee around and all those grounds would be all stirred up there and as you drank, you'd get that stuff stuck in your teeth and you don't want to do that. So Turkish coffee is not made for driving. My mother was never pleased with the way I make the coffee. In fact, she thought I'd ma never be able to marry a Turk. Well now, <laughs> now you have to understand, you have to understand how coffee is part of Turkish marriage. Because traditionally speaking, coffee is a very important part of the, uh, what should we call it, the courtship exercise. And when a young man has his eye on a young lady, what happens is, is the young man and uh, his family go to visit the young lady and her family. And the families all sit around and talk while the young lady gets to go into the kitchen and make coffee. And of course, the family will be judging how good the coffee is, and the young man will be also, because that coffee represents all of the young lady's domestic capabilities. <laughs> but, as in most things that men find out, is the woman has the last word. Because remember, each cup of coffee is served separately and a different way. So by changing the amount of sugar that's in the coffee, the young woman can indicate to the young man, and nobody else knows because he's the only one drinking that cup, you know, can indicate her level of pleasure in the fact that he's come seeking her hand in marriage. And in fact, if she really is not interested, salt can be substituted for sugar. <laughs> and it's normally served with a glass uh, full of water. The water is to be drank before you cleanse your palate. There you go, my dear. And then it's a ritual and a ceremony because it really, really forces you to sit down together and have quality time together. And that's what this is all about. Turkish coffee is actually just an excuse. Or Or you know that uh, there's really only one thing I enjoy more than drinking your coffee, and that's uh, spending my time with you. That's very nice to you. Thank you. You know, coffee becomes more than just a cup of coffee. When it's cooked by the loved one for the lover, or when it's served to a dad by his little girl for the first time, or served to the groom candidates on the night of their proposal by the young lady, or shared by an old couple celebrating their 50th looking at old family photos on their back porch, or shared by a couple of childhood best friends when they meet again after many years. There's a poem that my husband likes. When 
don't you uh, do the Turkish? It goes something like this. Gönül ne kahve ister, ne kahvehane. Gönül bir dost ister, kahve bahane. In English, in English that is, the higher the heart desires neither coffee nor coffee house. The heart desires a devoted friend. Coffee is but an excuse. Thank you very much. <laughs>